and some of it's even had a makeover. A new series of Total Wipeout at 5.30. Now, though, on BBC One, let's get the final score. Welcome to Final Score. We've got six Premier League matches underway and watching them with eagle eyes are Les Ferdinand, Matt Holland and Garth Crooks. We'll hear from the guys in a moment. All the scores and more in the next 40 minutes for you. But we're going to head around the Premier League grounds and we're going to start at St Andrews where a goal has just broken the deadlock. Andrew James can tell you all about this match. Yes, Gabby, it's just come to life. Birmingham City nil, Tottenham Hotspur 1. And if Ian Dowie was here, he'd be asking questions of Birmingham's bounce-back ability after that uh, first defeat in 13 in midweek. And they're behind again here to uh, Spurs. Jermaine Defoe, his 15th goal of the season. Good ball in from Bale. Headed on by Crouch, who got down well for a glancing header into the path of Defoe. Prior to that, the game had been oscillating from one end to the other. But it's uh, Spurs who've taken the initiative to try and firm up that top four place. Birmingham nil, Spurs one. Bolton haven't won at Anfield since 1954. And Liverpool are in their best run so far this season. So, Harry Gration, the score there at the moment might not surprise you. No, not at all. It's been a very good second-half display by Liverpool. OK, it was a lucky second goal, we have to say that. Insua's shot was speculative on the edge of the penalty area, to say the least. It took a wicked de deflection off uh, Kevin Davis. Jaskalainen had no chance at all. But we've had some wonderful moments from Gerrard. Ungog's missed the sitter of the season, perhaps. It's all Liverpool. It's their points. I would have thought, 2-0. Uh, before today, Fulham were unbeaten at Craven Cottage in 11 matches, uh, but Aston Villa have come there with a job to do, Tony Lockwood. Yes, they have. Villa went into this game without a league goal in four, but they've ended that barren run. Gabby Agbon Lahore saw to that with both goals in the first half. The opener from a Steam Petrov cross. Agbon Lahore won the aerial challenge, the header beating Mark Schwarzer. And then when Carlos Cuellar picked out Agbon Lahore, he spun away from a hesitant Breda Hangeland, and his left foot finish was always destined for the corner. Unless Fulham finds something in quick, they're heading for a fifth straight league defeat. It's Fulham nil. Villa 2. Now let's go to the KC Stadium now. The managers involved in this match uh, said ahead of today it was that proverbial six-pointer at the moment, Alan Biggs. Uh, neither of them are coming away with anything more than one point. But lots of entertainment value in this, though, Gabby. Hull 2, Wolves 2. Most of us thought a draw here. Most of us thought a dire game, but so far it's only one of those things. It's an absolute thriller. The stalemate we feared was broken after only 10 minutes in favour of Hull. Fine finish from Jan Vanegor of Heselink after great work from uh, Josie Altador. And an even more eventful start followed to the second half. First, Anthony Gardner slicing horribly into his own net to gift Wolves their first Premiership goal in five games. And then a, a rush of blood at the other end as Ronald Zubar uh, pushed Altidore, penalty to Hull, expertly converted by the man. Wolves have been trying all week to sign Stephen Hunt, but Matt Jarvis levelled again for Wolves. It's 2-2, it's anybody's game. Let's go to the DW Stadium. Mark Webber, uh, no goals, but almost something to report on. <laughs> almost indeed, Gabby. If Bruce Forsyth was watching this match, he'd say, good game, good game. No goals, opportunities are plenty for both sides. We've just seen one now. Cahill with the ball right by the goal mouth. He thought he tapped it in, but the referee had other ideas. There's also been Baines denied and also Sahar's been denied. At the other end, Roderick and Zogbia and Sharda have come close for Wigan. Perhaps neither side deserves to lose this one, Gabby, but a goal or two would be nice, you know. You'll get some. We've got a few minutes yet. Uh, let's go to Upton Park. No goals there, David Garrido. The new owners are there, though, aren't they? They are, yes, and uh, they've received a good reception from the fans. Uh, but this game has lacked intensity up until the uh, well, the midpoint, let's say, of the second half. West Ham on top in the first 45. Chance for Kovac, Bayrami and Diamante. Pedersen struck the bar with a free kick for, for Blackburn. And right now, they are in the ascendancy. Uh, Martin Olsen forcing Rob Green to a decent save away to his right. Gail Givet's shot cleared off the line uh, by Hammers sub Carlton Cole, hint of a handball there as well from Mark Noble, uh, and also Jason Roberts on as a substitute has called Green into action. He really should have scored though. Goal is here at Upton Park. Thank you very much, David Garrido. Uh, we'll just talk generally about the, the matches so far and what you've seen, but first of all, Garth, that offside decision for Laney, was it? Well, Fellaini scored the goal, but it wasn't him who was judged offside, it was, it was Pienaar beforehand, and I think the, 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 the assistant line was correct. 
OK, the race for fourth place is certainly hotting up and uh, Tottenham have done themselves no harm if things uh, stay as they are at the moment, have they, in their attempts to get it? Yeah, not at all. Uh, you know, Birmingham's been a, a tough pl place for most teams to go this season and uh, they've got a great home record and at the moment um, Spurs have won nil up and uh, Birmingham are just coming into the game a little bit now, so um, I'm a little bit on the edge of my seat at the moment. Uh, Liverpool uh, seem to be stumbling in the first half an hour or so. They've got those two goals and they'll probably take three points, but uh, are they as fluid as we've seen them? Uh, no, not perhaps. Uh, I think they, they're under real pressure for that fourth spot with Man City and Aston Villa. And today it has been a case of grinding out a result. Cout scored from a couple of yards and it's been uh, taken a known goal to get the second. And Bolton on occasions have shown uh, real promise and, and maybe chance of getting one on the break. Les, you're raising your eyebrows. Yeah, because you didn't mention Spurs there. You mentioned all those others. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's because you just spent 25 minutes uh, on the red button talking about Spurs. Garth, um, Agbon Lahore, given the kind of performance, especially his second goal today, that Fabio Capello, who's recuperating from knee surgery somewhere in the world, will sit up and take notice. Two first-class goals by Agbon Lahore, but two poor errors by defenders. Chris Smalling, everybody's talking about him, just signed for Man United. £10 million. Pounds. Yeah, pushed off the ball far too easy. And the second one, Hangeland, reading a ball that he shouldn't be reading, he should be marking. OK, well, the tea time kickoff is taking place at Turf Moor. And uh, John Terry, uh, of course, as part of the Chelsea side, has uh, turned up there, as uh, we'd expect, and is obviously the subject of huge newspaper interest today, tabloid interest in particular, about his private life. Um, and the big question which is emanating from this is, should he keep his captaincy? Should he be England captain, Les Ferdinand, in light of the uh, revelations... In light of revelations, Gab, I think sometimes players do things in their private life that you know it, it should be kept out of, out of football and, and footballing decisions shouldn't be made about what they do in their private life. But this time around, you're talking about a teammate who has aspirations of going to the World Cup, could be involved in the England, well, in the England squad. And if he is, what does that do to the morale of the other players knowing what's happened? Um, be very, very difficult. The FA have said this is solely Fabio Capello's decision. Garth, he will be the one that decides whether John Terry is captain. Is that right? I can't believe that the board of the FA, the National Game Board, people who are responsible for the national game and the image of the national game, aren't going to expect Fabio Capello to drop the captain, to pull that captaincy away drop from him. Drop him just from the captaincy, or should he have a place in the squad? Well, I think that uh, is a secondary question. But one thing I know for sure, that once the dynamic of a dressing room is changed, then the manager has, has to act, and I think that John could perhaps release the tension of everything that's going on at the moment by resigning the captaincy. He could take a little bit of the, of the, of the fuel out of the fire, yeah, for sure. Let's um, have a little look at the early kickoff in the Championship today. Second place, Nottingham Forest. We're at Pride Park. And Ivan Gaskell was watching a fiery East Midlands derby. So, Forrest's incredible run of 19 league games without defeat finally brought to an end, and it just had to be their fierce East Midlands rivals who stopped them in their tracks. But Derby deserved it. Forrest frustrated. Their impressive flowing football never allowed to flourish. Derby built a platform upon which they were able to ground out a narrow win, cemented by Rob Holtz, his header from Chris Common's fine free kick. Derby's first home league win since November will relieve growing pressure around here, Forest hope their first league defeats in September won't derail their promotion plans. Derby won, Forest nil. Well, a rare defeat from Nottingham Forest, uh, failing to keep the pressure on Newcastle United at the top. West Brom, though, looking to keep the pressure on them. And Andy Barwell, they're doing just that, aren't they, at the Hawthorns? They are. It's West Brom at Albion 3, Sheffield United 1. Graham Doran scored from the spot after a handball by Nick Montgomery. Then a well-taken Roman Bednar goal made it 2-0 to the home side. Sheffield United, though, got a lifeline just after the break. Darius Henderson scoring from a penalty. But Jerome Thomas, after a big deflection of Chris Morgan, re-established a two-goal cushion for the Championship's top scorers. West Brom still lead 3-1. Crystal Palace down to 21st in the table after that 10-point deduction for going into administration. You'd imagine that would uh, not have helped morale around the club, but on the pitch, things going well, Tony Husband. Yes, indeed, they've got a two-goal lead here, Gabby. Palace minus teenager Victor Moses, who's set to be sold in an effort to pay off some of those debts, uh, with a comfortable lead through a brace from Neil Dans. Two excellent finishes from the midfielder for a Palace side showing no ill effects from the club's slide into administration this week. And on this form, you have to question whether Dans could join Moses on the way out of Sohurst Park. Peterborough still to win away from home this season, and it's showed here. They're trailing 2-0. 
Jason Mohammed is watching Cardiff against Doncaster. Cardiff, of course, with a 6-0 win during the week at Bristol City. But today, the goal's not quite so forthcoming, Jason. That's right, Gabby. I counted six excellent chances for Cardiff City in the first 32 minutes, but they only scored one. Michael Chopra got his 16th of the season, then somehow fluffed two chances when one-on-one -on -one with Rovers keeper Neil Sullivan. Gareth Roberts' equaliser was a beauty. Left foot, bottom corner from 20 yards. James Coppinger just had an overhead kick saved. It's Cardiff City 1, Doncaster Rovers 1. Let's go to Loftus Road. QPR were on the end of a 5-0 thrashing during the week. It's not going so well today either, is it, Andy May? No, it's not. And Scunthorpe's good week is continuing after beating Sheffield Wednesday. They're one up here at Loftus Road, thanks to Gary Thompson, who smashed the ball home from just a few yards out after Gary Hooper was denied his 10th of the season in the championship. Jay Simpson has had several chances for Rangers, including one goal that was ruled out for offside. QPR nil, Scunthorpe 1. Coventry were looking to win four home matches on the bounce for the first time in nearly three years ahead of today's match. They've had a good run of form at the Rico Arena. Steve Lee's there. They're going to have to have an impressive last six or seven minutes, though, if they're going to do that today. Yes, it's Coventry nil, Blackpool 1, a 10-man Blackpool heading for victory here after a stunning goal, nearly another one from Barry Bannon, the on-loan Villa youngster, a name for the future, this boy, and a shot from fully 25 yards that gave Westwood no chance. He'd earlier hit the bar, he's been outstanding, and Blackpool have had Brad Ormeron sent off for a clash with Aaron Gunnison, which left the uh, Coventry man clutching his jaw. Coventry as flat as a pancake, it's Coventry nil, Blackpool 1. Sheffield Wednesday dropped points under Alan Irvin for the first time during the week with a loss against Scunthorpe, but they seem to be back to winning ways today, James Mason at Hillsborough. They certainly do. Sheffield Wednesday 2, Plymouth Argyle 1, Gabby. A superb game despite the lowly positions of these two sides, but it's the Owls, as you say, currently in command after overturning Rory Fallon's first half opener for Plymouth with two Luke Varney strikes, his second a superb solo effort just before the break. Plymouth doing everything they can to get an equaliser. Seven minutes to go, Sheffield Wednesday 2, Plymouth Argyle 1. And have Reading finally taken that FA Cup form into the Championship? Tony Colliver is at the Majeski Stadium. Yeah, still leading by one goal to nil. Six and a half minutes to go. Reading led at the break thanks to a Shane Long strike, and they could be onto their second home league win of the season. They hit the post midway through the second through Joby McEnough, but Barnsley did too well. Also with Ian Humes, his direct free kick flashed just over the bar. Reading one, Barnsley nil. So is Darren Ferguson heading for his second win as manager of Preston North End. Richard Askham can tell us. Looks like it, Gabby. Preston won Ipswich nil. For much of this game, the tactics of the former teammates, Keenan Ferguson Jr., have rather cancelled each other out as Preston just attack at the moment. It's been a game of few chances, but the deadlock was eventually broken midway through this half. Chris Brown powering ahead in a header for the home side. Ipswich with Roy Keane in passive. Always a dangerous sign in the away dugout of Hoft and Poft without much effect. Uh, let's go to the DW Stadium now. Uh, some goal news uh, to tell you about there. Is it Wigan or is it Everton? It is Everton. Wigan Athletic nil. Everton won Gabby. Baines with the corner in and Cahill rose. He knew he had to get his head on it and he did. Nil one. Cahill in the air. Talk about it, Matt. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, he hasn't scored a league goal, but believe it or not, with his foot in the whole of 2009. Oh, I like that stuff. How about that? Yeah. yeah. He's or 2010. The, the last eight, <laughs> his, his <laughs> last eight league goals have all been with his head. You, That's how good he's in the air. You've got to see the movement. There. The move comes right the way around. He arcs round, loses his marker. Great header. And let's go to the Rico Arena, though. Uh, Steve Leeds got some goal news. Is it an equaliser? Yes, it is. It's Coventry 1, Blackpool 1. I have to say, it's not really deserved, but Coventry are back in this with eight minutes to go. Um, young Carl Baker, they signed him from Stockport, made a great run on the right. He, his cross came in, it seemed a hit of deflection and ended up in the back of the net. Heartbreak for Blackpool, who'd taken the lead through Bandy, Barry Bannon and hit the bar, but they're now equal. It's Coventry 1, Blackpool 1. Let's go back to Deepdale, Richard Askham, goal news. Yes, Gabby, Preston have sealed the victory. A second goal, an absolute corker. Danny Welbeck on loan for the season from Manchester United. He was put clean through just inside the box. He took his time. He seemed to be dawdling, but he knew exactly what he was doing, and he chipped it deliciously over the keeper, Aaron Lee Barrett. Preston 2, Ipswich 0. Well, Preston haven't won successive league matches since the middle of September 2009, so... Uh start uh, that uh, he was looking for, Darren Ferguson, seems uh, to be on its way. Let's go to the Riverside. Gordon Strachan didn't quite get the start he wanted as uh, Middlesbrough manager, did he? But are things looking better for him today, Steve Sutton? 
Well, not really, Gabby. Hard to imagine these sides were involved in games that produced 11 goals in midweek because we've had none so far this afternoon. The best chance of the second half went to Chris Killen of Middlesbrough. He skied high over the bar from close range. Middlesbrough down to 10 man men. Barry Robson sent off two very soft uh, yellow cards, producing a red. Nil nil. Celtic had the chance to close the gap at the top of the SPL with a lunchtime kickoff against Hamilton. Alison Walker was watching this one. Final score, Hamilton nil, Celtic won. This wasn't a hugely convincing win for Celtic, but a hugely important three points. They had to wait 67 minutes before breaking the Hamilton defence. Substitute Morton Rasmussen had only been on the field for a few minutes and slotted home from close range. Hamilton didn't give up and pressurised the Celtic defence, but Boritz was never really tested. Celtic were awarded a penalty in injury time, but Thomas Cherney saved from Fortuny. Celtic did enough today, but there'll be plenty more unsettling moments for their fans as Tony Mowbray's rebuilding process continues. Hamilton Aki's nil, Celtic one. So Rangers uh, lead at the top of the SPL, cut to just seven points. Uh, Ian Turner's watching them at Ibrox this afternoon, looking to extend it back to ten. Before you tell us about how they're doing, though, Ian, uh, just wanted you to remind me once again how it was you actually beat Andy Murray at tennis. Yes, well, I gave him a tennis lesson uh, when he was about nine years old, Gabby. Me and my uh, doubles partner, Mad Mike Miller, thrashed him. And another Grand Slam winner, his brother Jamie, in a game of doubles. Uh, and every time you tell that story, it gets more and more embellished. I mean, Jamie Murray was brought in that time. <laughs> Next time, you'll have beaten Andy, Andre Agassi. No, and remember, Jamie's a Grand Slam champion as well. Yes, Next of doubles course. At, at Wimbledon. Do you want to know about the, fo the football, though, as well? Go on, then, yeah. It looks like it's another time. walk in the park for Rangers, is it? It is, yes. Their victory is about as easy as mine against Andy and Jamie Murray's all those years ago. Yes, they're winning 3-0, top against bottom here, so I suppose the result, no surprise. We're well into stoppage time. And when John Fleck added to Stephen Davis's first half, free kick. The, the Bairns resistance really was gone, Gabby, and Stephen Whitaker has since added another goal, his ninth of the season. Rangers going to stay 10 points clear at the top. Falkirk rooted to the bottom. Thank you. Continuing the Andy Murray link, his team are Hibs and they're playing against St Mirren at Easter Road. Brian McLaughlin's watching this one. And they're drawing one apiece with two and a half minutes left in the clock, Gabby. An own goal by Saul Bamba gives St Mirren the lead after just nine minutes. Liam Miller equalising midway through the first half. Hibs though, pushing more and more men forward, trying to get what would be no doubt a winner. Two minutes left here, Hibs one, St Mirren one. Let's go to David Garrido. Any signs of a goal, a winner there at Upton Park? A Golden-Sullivan duo are thinking that that uh, signature to get Benny McCarthy there will uh, be looking at very good business indeed. Yeah, they do need a striker, West Ham. They have had a bit of a response, though. Alessandro Diamanti has been their main threat. His uh, curling free kick tipped over his own by by Paul Robinson, and then he just fired another shot straight down the throat of the Rovers' keeper. Scott Parker also did well to get to the byline, but when he sent in the centre, no one was there attacking the six-yard box. He's getting scrappy uh, in the late to stages here, it's a West Ham nil, Blackburn nil. And let's go to St Andrews. Andrew James had to wait a while for the goal. Uh, does it look like Tottenham's lead is going to last the next few minutes? It does, to be honest, Gabby. And to be fair, it looks like they've settled on it as well. They've made a couple of substitutions. Bentley is just coming off to be replaced by uh, Jermaine Ginnis. And it looks as if Spurs are fairly comfortable now. There was a chance for McFadden for Birmingham, but he blasted that wide. And you do have to uh, ask the question, has Birmingham's bubble burst? Or have they just been unfortunate facing two of the top four teams, Chelsea and Spurs, in the space of the same? week. Only time will tell, but they don't really seem able to get their way back into this game with time running out. Birmingham nil, Spurs one. Thank you very much, Andrew James. Alan Biggs is at the KC Stadium, uh, the proverbial six-pointer. We've mentioned that already. It's amazing how tight it is down there. When Hull were in the league lead, it lifted them up the league to about 15th place. Now, with just a point, they're back second from bottom. They really need a win, both these sides. Yeah, it's a precipitous end. It's uh, Hull 2, Wolves 2 still. We knew it would be tense. We thought it would be close, but not this open. It's really entertaining, and the result, which is all that matters really, remains in the balance. Phil Brown's brought on Amir Zaki for his debut in an attempt to win it for Hull, who've led twice. Perhaps should have been a third time. A chance fluffed by Jan Venegor of Heselink from across, a free-kick cross from Stephen Hunt. It's still 2-2. Southend have come from 2-0 down. Uh, their Pat Baldwin's goal in 89 minutes makes it 2-all. So are the spoils going to be shared there? Let's go to Mark Webber again at the DW Stadium, watching Wigan against Everton. How have the home side responded to that goal? Their head's not bowed, Gabby. They're absolutely up for this, although Pinar is on the ball now and he's trying to push forward, but they certainly still feel that they are owed something out of this. They fought hard throughout the whole of the game and they feel that the goal should come their way, but it's Everton with the ball now trying to push forward. They may get another one here. It's just about cleared and it's still Wigan nil, Everton 1. 
Let's go back to Andrew James at St Andrews. Tell us which way this goal's gone. Gabby, it's uh, an equalising goal for Birmingham City. What do I know, thinking they couldn't get back into the game? It was a, a hopeful ball played out to the far side. Cameron Jerome headed it back across goal. And Liam Ridgewell was right on the line. Couldn't miss that time and put it high into the roof of the net. It's only about the third real chance that Birmingham have had all game. But it could well have given them a point. Birmingham won. Spurs won. Thank you, Andrew. Two Saturdays on the trot uh, that Tottenham have conceded uh, last-minute goals, Les, and you can't replay this one. No, you can't, unfortunately, and this is just a lack of concentration. The ball comes over, uh, Ridgewell's gone up, the uh, ball's gone over, Jerome's headed the ball back, great header back, but um, Ridgewell's just walked, run past uh, Chorluka, who um, went to sleep for a little bit on the far post, and um, as, as you said... They... It's a real shame for Spurs, yeah. because if they'd have won this, they'd have put on 44 points. Liverpool are winning away from home. Now, Liverpool closed the gap if the results... If the latest scores remain the same. Yeah, Villa are winning Villa away from well. home as well. Not to forget, Manchester City have got to play tomorrow Correct. against since... Portsmouth, a match you think they'd walk away with. Since they, since they scored those Spurs, they've just got deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper, yeah. haven't they? Mm. Yeah. OK, uh, let's go to Carrow Road. Uh, the leaders of League One are looking good for that position this evening. Alan Gordon, Alex Gordon-Martin, sorry. Yes, they certainly are, Gabby. It's still Norwich 2, Hartlepool 1. Goals from Cody McDonald and Michael Rose to the leaders after Neil Ashton's opener. Poole old boy Michael Nelson's had the best opportunity in the second half, but headed wide. The game's in a bit of a lull at the minute, and I can't really see past the home win. It's Norwich 2, Hartlepool 1. Let's go to the Cardiff City Stadium. Is it a winner, Jason Mohamed? Cardiff City, in the dying seconds, just like they did last week, have sneaked a victory. I was just about to write some notes to say the Doncaster Rovers thoroughly deserve a point for hang on in there. But Jay Bothroyd has just scored from a corner. No pressure whatsoever on the goalkeeper, but Bothroyd popped up on the line and nodded it past Neil Sullivan. Cardiff City have won it. They don't deserve to. Now they're keeping the pressure up there, though, aren't they, in the championship? Uh, because West Brom, of course, winning as well. Newcastle United don't play until tea time against Leicester. Let's go to Elland Road, though. Mark Bishop, are Leeds looking good for their win? They're looking very good. Leeds United 2, Colchester nil. Over 23,000 at Elland Road. They've witnessed Leeds' goal machine, Jermaine Beckford, take his overall goal tally to 24. A penalty in a close-range effort, and it's going to end Leeds' recent dip in league form. They've been all over Colchester. Two terrific saves from Williams. McSheffrey is dazzled on his online debut from Birmingham. Bromby has just hit the crossbar. Leeds are sauntering and they're 2-0 up. Let's go to Easter Road. Has somebody squeezed a winner in there, Brian McLaughlin? They certainly have and it's Hibs who look like they've stolen all three points. Another own goal. This time Jack Ross. Ian Murray's cross into the box. Ross tried to put the ball past the post. It crept inside. Hibs 2, St Mirren 1. Let's go to Craven Cottage. Full-time whistle has blown. Fulham have lost an impressive home record, but Aston Villa have got themselves right back in that fourth-place race. Tony Lockwood. None other than Arsene Wenger labelled Aston Villa a long ball team, but believe me, there's a lot more to Martin O'Neill's side. League goals have been hard to come by, but Gabby Agbon Lahore ended that long wait for a breakthrough, first connecting with a Stylian Petrov cross to steer ahead a wide of Mark Schwarzer, and then latching on to a Carlos Square pass, turning away from a hesitant Breda Hangeland and curling it into the corner. A real lift for Villa's Champions League aspirations. Dunn and Collins really impressive at the heart of that Villa defence. This Fulham's fifth straight league defeat. Fulham nil, Aston Villa two. Neither of those goals came from long balls, Mr Wenger might want to note. Absolutely. Let's go to Upton Park. David Garrido, they couldn't get the goal there, could they? They couldn't. West Ham nil, Blackburn nil. The Hammers, clearly the better team in the first half, despite Morton Gantz, Pedersen striking the bar for Blackburn. But Rovers responded after the break. Martin Olsen and Jason Roberts forcing saves from Rob Green. Gail Jive having a shot cleared off the line as well. Uh, West Ham couldn't find any real incision after the break. The arrival of Ben McCarthy will be welcomed. For Blackburn, well, they'd lost on their previous 10 visits to Upton Park, but now it's only one defeat in six in the Premier League. Goal is here at Upton Park. Full time at Anfield, Harry Grayson, Liverpool. Well, the result that neither manager really wanted, did they? Alan Biggs. Yes, 2-2 between Hull and Wolves. Who'll be the happier? I uh, have to say, uh, Wolves, I think they were twice behind. Uh, it's now nine games without a win for Phil Brown's Hull. Then again, Wolves nearly won it at the death from new man Jeffrey Mujangi on from the bench earlier. Jan Vanegor of Heseling started the scoring for Hull. 1-0 at the break. Wolves then gifted an equaliser, a spectacular own goal from Anthony Gardner. Stephen Hunt's penalty put
put Hull back in front, but Matt Jarvis levelled for Wolves. Could be a priceless goal in the final analysis. Hull 2, Wolves 2. Let's go to the DW Stadium. Everton have managed to keep a clean sheet for the first time in eight matches, Mark Webber, but more importantly, they've got all the spoils. Indeed, Wigan nil, Everton won. Tim Cahill's jumped ahead the ball from a Leighton Baines corner was the full stop we were looking for in this enthralling game. As enthralling as an Agatha Christie thriller, to be honest. A bit harsh on Wigan, who battled hard throughout this end-to-end -end game, and they had loads of chances themselves, including Zogbia hitting the crossbar in injury time. But fortune favours the brave. Everton's renaissance continues. Wigan Athletic nil, Everton won. Well, Tottenham Hotspur won't Cardiff City Stadium. A financial problems off the pitch for Dave Jones, but on it, his side keep that charge on the top of the table. Absolutely. Cardiff City have been deadly in front of goal in their last three games. Gabby, 11 goals, but today they left their shooting boots at home. Chopra scored his 16th of the season, but he also missed two easier chances. McCormack and Bothroyd also missed. Doncaster Rovers thoroughly deserved a point. Gareth Roberts' equaliser came as Rovers piled on the pressure in the second half. But Jay Bothroyd popped up with a winner in the dying seconds. They're making a habit of this. Heartbreak for Rovers, joy for the Bluebirds. Thank you, Jason. Uh, let's go to Hillsborough. Sheffield Wednesday taking on Plymouth today. And uh, Alan Irvin's revolution is uh, continuing, isn't it, James Mason? Yes, a 2-1 win. Another good win for Alan Irvin's men. But they had to come from behind to do so after Plymouth's Rory Fallon got the final touch to an in-swinging corner early on. But within 30 seconds, the Owls were level. Luke Varney beating David Stockdale to the ball to score his first before firing in a superb solo second. Potential overseas investment on the horizon. Another three points. Good times at Hillsborough, 2-1. Yeah, and the lifter right off the bottom, don't they? They're moving away from the relegation zone. Let's move to Selhurst Park. Bad news off the pitch, good news on it, Tony Husband. Yes, and Neil Warnock's just taken his players into the centre circle to salute the Selhurst Park fans. A comfortable win in the, in the end for Palace. And now fans wait to see if teenager Victor Moses will indeed be leaving the club and for how much money as well for this club and administration. Without him, Neil Dan stole the show with two fine goals for a Palace side who dominated for long periods. But they did give Peterborough enough encouragement to stay in the game, at least until Dan slotted home his second. You'd back Palace to pull clear of the relegation zone on this form and with this team as as long as they can keep most of their players. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to the Hawthorns. West Brom continuing their charge on the promotion places. Andy Barwell. Yes, the first league win of the year for West Brom and Albion. A timely victory too as they look to get back into the automatic promotion places. They were very good value for the 2-0 half-time lead. But Darius Henderson at the break, uh, just after the break for Sheffield United, got one back. That livened up West Brom. Jerome Thomas's goal, though, put it beyond doubt. Roberto Di Matteo would be pleased with his side's overall performance. They're very pleasing on the eye. Full time, West Bromwich Albion 3, Sheffield United 1. Uh, and match in League One affecting things at the top of the table. Didn't go the way that Charlton would have wanted, though, did it, John Anderson? Well, they're still playing and we're in the final seconds, but it is 1 1. Sam Sodger's own goal giving Tranmere the lead early in the second half, but then skipper Nicky Bailey popping up to nudge the ball over the line for 1 1. But Chantler in danger of dropping five points to struggling sides in the space of a week. We're still playing here, there may yet be time, and uh, there's been a sending off as well. Tranmere are down to 10 men, with uh, one of their defenders has just been. Red carded the second yellow for him. There may still be time for Charlton, but it's running out. It's 1 1. Now, don't forget, you can see all the build up and get all the goals as they go in from 2 30 every Saturday and keep the same illuminating company I manage to as well. All you have to do is press the red button. It's time now, though, to get the full classified results with Tim Gudgeon. First, the Barclays Premier League, Birmingham City 1, Tottenham Hotspur 1. Burnley and Chelsea kick off in about half an hour. Fulham 0, Aston Villa 2. Hull City 2, Wolverhampton Wanderers 2. Liverpool 2, Bolton Wanderers 0. West Ham United 0, Blackburn Rovers 0. Wigan Athletic 0, Everton 1. In the Coca-Cola Championship, Cardiff City 2, Doncaster Rovers 1. Coventry City 1, Blackpool 1. Crystal Palace 2, Peterborough United 0. Derby County 1, Nottingham Forest 0. Leicester City and Newcastle United kick off in a few minutes. Middlesbrough 0, Bristol City 0.
Preston North End 2, Ipswich Town 0. Queen's Park Rangers 0, Scunthorpe United 1. Reading 1, Barnsley 0. Sheffield Wednesday 2, Plymouth Argyle 1. Watford's match with Swansea City postponed. West Bromwich Albion 3, Sheffield United 1. In League 1, Brighton Hove Albion 0, Millwall 1. Bristol Rovers 2, Wickham Wanderers 3. Carlisle United 2, Leighton Orient 2. Charlton Athletic 1, Tranmere Rovers 1. Gillingham 0, Walsall 0. Leeds United 2, Colchester United 0. Milton Keynes Dons 1, Exeter City 1. Norwich City 2, Hartlepool United 0. 1, sorry. Oldham Athletics match with Brentford postponed. Southampton 2, Stockport County 0. Southend United 2, Swindon Town 2. Yeovil Town 0, Huddersfield Town 1. In League 2, Aldershot Town 1, Grimsby Town 1. Cheltenham Town's match with Darlington postponed. Crew Alexandra 1, AFC Bournemouth 2. Lincoln City and Dagenham and Redbridge postponed. Morecambe 0, Chesterfield 1. Northampton Town 1, Burton Albion 1. Notts County 2, Barnet 0. Port Vale 2, Hereford United 0. Rotherham United and Macclesfield Town's match postponed. Shrewsbury Town 0, Accrington Stanley 1. Torquay United 1, Bradford City 2. In the Blue Square Premier, Altrincham 1, Wrexham 3. Chester City and Grays Athletics match postponed. Forest Green Rovers 1, Mansfield Town 4. Hayes and Yedding United 1, Rushton and Diamonds 6. Kettering Town's match with Crawley Town postponed. And Luton Town 2, Ebbsfleet United 3. In the Clydesdale Bank Scottish Premier League, Aberdeen 0, Motherwell 3. Hamilton Academical 0, Celtic 1. Hibernian 2, St Mirren 1. Kilmarnock 4, Dundee United 4. Rangers 3, Falkirk 0. St Johnston 1, Hearts 0. In the Arnbury Scottish Division 1, Air United and Wraith Rovers a postponed match. Dundee 0, Ross County 1. Dunfermline Athletic and Queen of the South and Greenock Morton and Airdrie United, both matches postponed. Inverness Caledonian Thistle 2, Partick Thistle 1. In Scottish Div 2, Alloa Athletic 1, Arbroath 0. Brecon City 2, Stenhouse Muir 2. Cowden Beath and Stirling Albion, East Fife and Clyde, Peterhead and Dumbarton, all three matches postponed. In Scottish Div 3, Annan Athletic and Albion Rovers match postponed. Berwick Rangers 0, Montrose 2. East Stirlingshire 2, Stranra 0. Four for Athletic and Elgin City, Livingston and Queen's Park, both matches postponed. In the Welsh Premier, Neath 1, Elements Kevin Druids 1. Newtown 0, Carmarthen Town 0. Welshpool Town 1, Haverford West County 3. The Carling Premiership, Ballymena United's match with Glenavon postponed. Cliftonville 3, Institute 0. Coleraine 4, Glentoran 3. Crusaders 2, Dungannon Swifts 3. Linfield 5, Newry City 0. And Portadown's match with Lisbon Distillery postponed. So let's have a look at the tables and the top of the Premier League looks like that. A win for Chelsea at Turf Moor in the late game will send the Blues four points clear. Title rivals Manchester United and Arsenal meet at the Emirates tomorrow. And that equaliser at St Andrews means Tottenham are just a point ahead of Liverpool in the race for the final Champions League spot. Villa's win at Fulham means they're a point behind the Reds with a game in hand. At the bottom, Portsmouth visit Manchester City tomorrow but would still stay at the bottom of the table even if they win at Eastlands. Hull's draw means the Tigers stay in the relegation zone. But the point for Wolves keeps them just above the bottom three along with Bolton and West Ham. 
Newcastle will have the chance to go eight points clear when they play Leicester this evening in the Championship. Nottingham Forest remain in the second automatic promotion spot despite suffering their first defeat in 20 games, losing 1-0 at Derby. West Brom took advantage of Forest's slip. They beat Sheffield United 3-1. They're now two points behind with a game in hand. Cardiff, Swansea and Sheffield United complete the playoff places. At the bottom, Peterborough lost at Crystal Palace. They're still 11 points from safety. Plymouth slip a place after they lost at Sheffield Wednesday and Reading beat Barnsley. Reading, who are still in the relegation zone, are three points behind Ipswich, who lost at Preston. And League One, Leeds Norwich maintain their three-point advantage over Leeds after both won this afternoon. Leeds do have two games in hand, though. Norwich beat Hartlepool 2-1 and uh, Leeds beat Colchester. Charlton's push for an automatic promotion spot stuttered again. They were held at home by Tranmere. At the bottom, Stockport suffered a defeat number 17 of the season, losing at Southampton. They're seven points adrift of Wickham, who came from behind to win at Bristol Rovers, their first win in nine matches. League two, uh, leaders Rochdale not in action until Monday when they visit Bury. Their lead is down to seven points after Bournemouth ended a three-match losing streak by winning 2-1 at Crewe. Rotherham's game was frozen off while Notts County beat Barnet 2-0. At the bottom, Darlington's game also fell victim to the weather. They're now nine points adrift after Grimsby picked up a point at Aldershot. And the Blue Square Prem, well, the top three were all involved in the FA Trophy this afternoon. Sorry, let's go on to the SPL, actually. Rangers restored their 10-point advantage with a 3-0 victory against Falkirk. Celtic won at Hamilton in the early kickoff. They can cut the gap to seven points if they win their match in hand against Kilmarnock on Tuesday. And the game of the day saw Dundee United draw four all at Kilmarnock, while Jim Jeffries' first game as Hearts boss ended in defeat at St. Johnson. Well, you can see all the goals and incidents from the Premier League at 10.30 tonight on BBC One. Repeated, of course, tomorrow at 7.35 on BBC One in the morning. And uh, the Football League show follows that at uh, 10 to midnight this evening on uh, BBC One. The Africa Cup of Nations, it's the final tomorrow. Ghana, Egypt at 3.30 on BBC One. A match of the day, two features. Arsenal, Man United and Manchester City against Portsmouth on BBC Two tomorrow at 10. Also tomorrow, Andy Murray looking to turn over 74 years of hurt with a Grand Slam win over Roger Federer in Melbourne. Our coverage starts at 8 o'clock on BBC One. Then we're going to have highlights at 5 to 11 of that famous victory. Sorry, of that match, uh, tennis match. Of course, I want Murray to win. Um, today, uh, interesting afternoon. It didn't, you know, it, it, it kind of mm -hmm. took a while to get, come to life, didn't it? Yes. Uh, what's your highlight? My performance of the day, without doubt, who'd have thought that Ar Arsene Wenger would have provided Aston Villa <laughs> with the perfect team talk? Agbon Law was sensational and they deserve the victory. Totally agree. I thought he was outstanding, Agbon Law. <coughs> and the goals were, were, were well worked as well. Um, Petrov's fantastic ball into Agbon Law. You've got five seconds left to tell me yours. Liverpool. <laughs> Liverpool. Even three syllables, I can't make it last five seconds. Thank you very much. Final score continues on the red button and online, including goals from Cardiff against Doncaster and Derby against Nottingham Forest as well. So plenty to stay with us on the red button. If you're not, though, have a great weekend and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.